Did we? Uh, yes. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, is there anybody that did not get the slide of notes? By the way. Okay. Let's go to the next one. We talked about Lincoln and how on February 24, 1863, he signed a bill that made Arizona a separate territory from New Mexico. Um, and so Lincoln kind of had an indirect hand on the founding of Prescott because in all likelihood, uh, if Lincoln doesn't sign the bill and Arizona remains part of New Mexico territory, then there's a, probably a pretty good chance Pres Prescott doesn't get founded. So that's the reason I had Abraham Lincoln on that on that list of guys on one of the slides I was showing you yesterday. So uh, I'm going to have you advance the slide again. Um, one of the things that I want you to know is that this slide should have another map. There should be another map of Arizona this says 1863, and if that map was up here, you'd have no counties but Yavapai. Yavapai was, is the mother of all Arizona counties, okay? And so you can see how in 1864 they created three more counties. They created uh, another county in 1865 called Paiute County. Paiute County only lasted for like nine months because um, the people in the Las Vegas area petitioned Congress, to, they wanted to remain in Nevada. Actually, they weren't in Nevada, they just wanted to join Nevada. Nevada was made a state in 1864. And so uh, Congress granted them that wish, and so we lost Paiute County. Uh, what they did is uh, Arizona extends right up in here like this, and then it goes straight up this is actually about, this, this is right here is a 37 degree north latitude line. And so they just extended Mojave up into here. And of course, this area went to, the, uh, to Nevada. Go ahead, real quick. Okay. All right. Advance the slide. Oh, I almost forgot. Did we talk about what the uh, name Yavapai means? Yes. Yeah. Sun people. Sun people. So we already talked about that. Okay. All right. So now this brings us to the next slide. Yes, Corinne. Is Yavapai still the biggest county today? No. No, Coconino County is the biggest county in Yavapai County. And by the way, Coconino County is the largest county in what we call the contiguous United States. Okay. There are some counties in Alaska bigger than Coconino, but Coconino is the largest county among the 48 connected states. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes? Um, I have a question about um, yesterday. I was talking to my grandma, and she said that you knew my great great grandpa. I knew your great great grandpa? I must be really old. Well, she said like, he died like, right after you guys I think I, I know who you're talking about. Bruce? Yeah. All right, now, um, I have told you for the last week that the mountain men were very, very colorful guys. And I mean, they had colorful personalities. These guys were all over the place. Uh, they not only were fur trappers, uh, but they also, uh, many of them, were looking for minerals. Uh, and also, they served from time to time as guides in the U.S. military. And this guy was no exception. Pauline Weaver was in and out of Arizona several times over the course of about 35 years. He actually came into Arizona in the late 1820s. And, uh, again, uh, following him around was... You, you get a, a really good geography lesson if you follow this guy around. Anyway, when the first party of gold seekers, the Walker Party, came into Arizona uh, in the spring of 1863 and came up the Hacienda River. Now, the Hacienda River is about seven or eight miles just south of town here on the other side of the mountains. 
on the, on the south side of Prescott here. And they came up the Hacienda River, the Walker Expe uh, Party, Walker Expedition, and they came up here in 1863. And when they came into the area where the Prescott, downtown Prescott is, they, there was an old gentleman camped out on the west side of Granite Creek, and that was Pauline Weaver. And that's why Charlotte Hall, she called him the first citizen of Prescott because he was camped out here when the first white guys came and he was actually the first white guy in the area. But when the Walker Party came in, he was, he was here. Um, he, uh, there are a number of geographical features named after this guy in Arizona. Uh, over in uh, west central Arizona, over in the Parker area, there's a group of mountains called the Weaver Mountains. There is also a kind of one of those things that sticks up out of the earth like Thumb Butte over here does. Uh, there is a prominent point in the Superstition Mountains called Weaver's Needle. Again, named after this guy. Tate. Is the picture like a photograph picture or a painting? That is a sketch of him. Good question. There are no pictures uh, available of, of this guy. Um, this guy knew a guy by the name of Henry Wickenburg, whom Wickenburg was named after. Uh, he also knew another guy that we're going to be talking about later on, a guy by the name of Jack Swilling. He knew, he knew Joseph Redford Walker. You know, in, in the 1860s, there were probably not more than 3,000 uh, people in Arizona. Uh, and I'm talking about people of European descent. So these guys all kind of ran into each other from time to time, and they knew each other. Um, so anyway, I'm going to have Lindsay advance the slide here again. I've told you how well these guys traveled around. Well, Pauline Weaver traveled around quite a lot in death as well as in life. In 1867, he was over in Fort Verde, which is Camp Verde, and he died there. Had died of natural causes, had a heart attack. And they buried him in the military cemetery at, at Fort Verde. Now, now remember now, he was in the military. He served as a guide. In fact, uh, if you remember, one of the expeditions during the Mexican-American War that the U.S. Army had was uh, a regiment of troops, about 1,500 troops under the direction of Stephen Watts Kearney. And their mission was to make sure that Southern California was stayed in the Union, or I shouldn't say stayed in the Union, but came into the Union as a result of the Mexican-American War. And Pauline Weaver was on that expedition um, and serving the Army as a guy. Question? I'm going to explain today. Explain right now. In 1892, they closed Fort Verde. You know, uh, the Indian problem became no more, and places like Fort Whipple and Fort Verde were closed down for a while. And in 1892, the Army decided to take up all the military coffins out of the military cemetery at Camp Verde and take all those remains of those bodies and take them to, to a military uh, cemetery in San Francisco. And of course, Pauline Weaver was one of those guys. And then in the 1920s, Charlotte Hall got the idea that maybe the first citizen of Prescott should come back to Prescott. So she wrote the Department of the Army. She wrote the Army, and the Army says, sure, no, not a problem, but you're going to have to come up with the funds to have the remains of Pauline Weaver shipped over to Prescott. So a scout troop here in Prescott, uh, working with Charlotte Hall, raised the money to have his remains brought to Prescott, and that happened in 1929. In fact, that troop that did that, that troop is still in existence today. The very first scout troop in Arizona was created in the early 1920s, and it's still going today in connection with the Congregational Church on Gurley Street, 
right, right across from the county administration building. Does anybody know what troop number, or can you guess what troop number that is? One. one. Troop number one. By the way, just like the Prescott Unified School District is district number one, because the Prescott Unified School District was the very first school district organized in Arizona. So, they brought Pauline Weaver back to Prescott, and he's buried at Charlotte Hall Museum. If you walk into the main entrance, that would be from the Gurley Street side of Charlotte Hall Museum, the governor's mansion is to the right. And right on the north side of the governor's mansion, the side that you walk in on, this headstone is there, still there. Now, obviously, the area around that headstone looks a lot different today than it did back in 1929, as you can see there. But you can he, he's still there. So the first citizen of Prescott is, is here. He's, he's re, probably remained there forever now. No more traveling for Pauline. By the way, Pauline Weaver's real first name was Pal. Was in Lake Pal. But he changed the name when he got in to, with the, uh, the Spanish people. He, he also knew Spanish. He also knew Spanish. And his name was Paulino to the Spaniards. And then as he came into contact with more and more Americans, the Americans called him Paulino. All right, let's uh, go to the next slide. Yes? Um, how old? 18. And another thing, um, I thought that back then when you change your name, like, did they still have birth certificates? One of the things we don't know about Paul, some, most of the time there were birth certificates, but you bring up a very good question about Pauline Weaver. We really don't know how old he was. I'm not sure he knew exactly when he was born. Uh, he was probably somewhere in his mid-60s when he passed away. But we do not know the exact birth date of Pauline Weaver. Yes, Tiara. Um, I remember you saying that um, Prescott or Prescott Unified School District is the number one school district because it's first one. So, what exactly was Prescott Valley School District? The Humboldt School District was created quite a while ago, uh, actually clear back in the 1920s. Uh, and for a long time, it did not have a high school. It only had an elementary school in Humboldt. And I can tell you that Bradshaw High School, was uh, its first year in operation was the fall of 1976. My, my uncle, his first teaching job was in the Humboldt School District, Humboldt Elementary School in Humboldt in the 1920s. So that's the reason I know something about it. Yes, Ethan. What was the first school district? Like the United States. Oh, you'd have to go probably Connecticut, going clear back to the 1640s. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Let's talk about Walker. Got to talk about Joseph Redford Walker, a very famous mountain man. Now, let me just tell I'm going to keep going back to the Mexican American War, and I talk about all the expeditions that the United States Army had as we tried to defeat the Mexicans in that war. Uh, Stephen Watts Carney had the duty of, tr of taking control of Southern California. A guy by the name of John C. Fremont was ordered to take troops to Northern California and, and to control that area. And so, anyway, John C. Fremont also has a direct connection to Prescott. But the reason I bring up Fremont is because on Fremont's expedition to Northern California in 18... 46 and 47, his right-hand man, his guide, was Joseph Redford Walker, who we have a little Walker community about seven, eight miles south of Lynx Lake, whom that little community is named after Joseph Redford Walker. When Walker got uh, into uh, California, uh, he was ordered by Fremont to go south. And in the 1840s, Walker led a 
group of men to Southern California, and on their way to Southern California, they went through the Yosemite Valley. We think that probably the first Anglo-Americans to go into the Yosemite Valley was the Walker Expedition in the, in the 1840s, going through there. So, and by the way, John C. Fremont, later in life, would become the fifth territorial governor of Arizona. John C. Fremont and his wife lived from 1878 to 1881 right here in Prescott. In fact, there's a Fremont house at Charlotte Hall Museum. Now that Fremont house originally sat on the corner of Marina Street and Gurley Street. In fact, it, it was moved several times. And finally in 1972, they were going to demolish it and there was a group of women here in the Prescott area who got the money together and, and with Charlotte Hall Museum people, they made arrangements to have the house moved onto the grounds of Charlotte Hall Museum. I have a little bit of a interest in that because I was working in 1972 for a contractor here in town and we had the job to put all the electrical lines into that renovated house. And so I got to be pretty acquainted with the, the Fremont house that summer. But anyway, John C. Fremont was here. In fact, his wife uh, did a lot of education work here in Prescott while they were here. Yeah, she helped with teaching and so forth. Yes, Michaeli. How do you like move a house while still keeping it in decent condition? They jacked the house up, put a couple steel uh, posts underneath it, and put it on wheels, and down the street it went. But how did they? Is it like actually in the museum, or is it just like outside and like? Uh, the the house is actually right across the uh, sidewalk on the museum grounds from the governor's mansion. You can take a tour of it. Okay? Let me go back to Joseph Rutherford Walker, though.